Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're back doing some more vote math. And what does that mean? That means we're going to deal with a word problem that's going to require, well, a word problem that deals with boats. Boats, sailing, being in the water and all that. And it deals with trigonometry and some algebra and whatnot. Um, first, I'm going to read the problem, and then we're going to get to the drawing, right? We're going to draw a diagram of what the problem looks like. You know, because it's always helpful to visualize and be able to visualize what we're working with. You know what I mean? All right. So you can read along. The word problem is written, is written out in the description section right underneath of the video. All right. So a boat is heading towards a lighthouse. All right. Lighthouse is a tall um, cylindrical type uh, fixture on the on the shoreline. You know, um, typically like uh, like on land. It's on land. Right. Um, and it's got a huge light on top of it, right? And it's it's used so that uh, as a guiding light, so boats can see, can see the shore, all right, when it's dark out. All right, a boat is heading towards a lighthouse whose beacon light, and the beacon light is the actual light that's on top of the lighthouse, all right? Whose beacon light is 141 feet above the water, all right? From point A, the boat's crew measures the angle of elevation to the beacon six degrees, before they draw closer. They measure the angle of elevation a second time from point B at some later time to be 12 degrees. Find the distance from point A to point B. Round your answer to the nearest foot. All right, round your answer to the nearest foot. So we're not dealing with tenths or hundredths or none of that. We're dealing with whole numbers. All right, so let's draw this. All right, so let's say we got a lighthouse, right? And now we know, so because we're dealing with angle of elevation, we know we're dealing with a right triangle. So that's a, that's a giveaway. That's a hint. So write that down in your notes. Whenever you are dealing with a problem that deals with angle of elevation or angle of depression, angle of depression is when you're looking down at something. Angle of elevation is when you're looking up at something. All right, the angle that's formed with your eyesight and a flat surface. That's the angle of elevation. All right, angle of depression is the angle that's formed with a flat surface, right? And your eyesight when you're looking down at something. So, um, we know we're dealing with a right triangle, all right? So, let's draw a right triangle. So, let's do this. So, we got this right here. This right here. This is my right angle. All right, so that didn't actually meet, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut that off. Actually, I could have left that, but here's my right triangle. So look, this right here, this is gonna be my lighthouse. This right here is the beacon light. All right, the beacon light is at the top of the lighthouse. And imagine this is the lighthouse, right? This is the shore, this is the shore right? Um, the boat is actually heading toward the lighthouse, though, right? So, and initially it was at point A. So we're going to call this point A, right? The boat is actually traveling in that direction. I did another problem recently similar to this. The boat was traveling out to sea. Now, this boat is actually traveling in from sea, right? So it's going in this direction. All right. And that's important to understand in terms of visualizing what's actually taking place. All right. So this is the boat right here is traveling in this direction. And then it said, OK, it also said the beacon light is 141 feet above the water. So this is 141. 141 feet. Right. 141 feet. The lighthouse, 141 feet tall. The beacon light is at the top. And then from point A, the boat's crew measures the angle of elevation to the beacon of six degrees. So the angle of elevation. So imagine they're on the boat here. They're looking up at the beacon light at a six degree angle. Now, this is definitely not a six degree angle, but according to the, to the drawing, but a lot of times when we do drawings, they won't be to scale. Right. But we deal with we deal with the information. We deal with the data we're given, even if it doesn't even if the picture does not accurately represent the information, because that's definitely not a six degree angle. All right. But we're going to work with it, though. All right. So now then it says. From point A, the boat's crew measures the angle of elevation to be six degrees. Before they draw closer, they measure the angle of elevation a second time from point B. So let's say a second time. Let's say the boat's traveling. They're going toward the, toward the shoreline. 
let's say, let's say right here is point B, right? Boom, let's say that's point B, and then the crew looks up. So first they were at point A right here, but they're traveling in that direction. And this is the shoreline right here. So they're trying to get to the shore, right? They're trying to get to the shore. So now from point B, they're looking up at the beacon light, and now their angle of elevation is 12 degrees. It's 12 degrees now. So now let me draw a line from here. No, that ain't, no, that's not going to be a good angle. I actually need a, need a ruler for real. But I'm trying to avoid going to get a ruler. I'm trying to freehand this. And I'm trying to see. Oh, it's not bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. So the angle of elevation from here, so they imagine they're on the boat right here, and they're looking up at the beacon light. So they're looking at, so this angle is the angle of elevation, which would be 12 degrees, right? All right, now we want to find the distance from point A to point B. So we want this. This is what we're interested in finding, from point A to point B. That is what we want, all right? We want the distance from point A to point B. All right, so... When you encounter a problem like this, what you actually want to do, what comes to mind is this. If I knew the total distance from here, from the shoreline to point A, and then I also knew the distance from the shoreline to point B, I could subtract the distance from the, shore, from the shoreline to point A. Well, actually, no. The distance from the shoreline to point B, I could subtract this from the entire distance and that will leave me with this distance right here. I'll say it again. If I knew the entire distance and I knew this distance, I could subtract this distance from the total distance and that will leave me with that distance. So that's what I want to do. I want to figure out this total, this distance first and I can do that using trigonometry. Trigonometry is a valuable tool, right? Actually, it's an invaluable tool, right? Which means it's like it's priceless, right? So I can figure this out, right? So I know that's a 12 degree angle and I know I have my opposite side and this will be my adjacent side. So I got to ask myself, ask myself, which trig ratio uses opposite sides and adjacent sides? Tangent, not cosine, not sine, but tangent does because Toa, so cut Toa. Toa is this. Toa is tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? All right, now theta is the Greek symbol that we use to represent the angle measure, the angle measure. So what we're gonna do is this, we're gonna do tangent of 12 degrees. Now, if you're doing this on a calculator, make sure your calculator is in degree mode and not radian mode. Because if it is in radian mode, it's gonna give you the wrong number. All right, that's another thing. So tangent 12 is equal to the opposite side from the 12 degree angle, which is this right here. This is opposite, meaning it's across from it, right? And that's 141, 141 feet. So you replace opposite with 141. Now adjacent is this side right here that we don't know. Let's call that X. We're going to call it X, all right? Now, we're going to do some algebra now, right? The trig, you know, it's, I mean, we're going to use a calculator to figure out the tangent of 12 degrees, you know, unless you don't have a calculator and you got to use that chart in the back of your trig book or the back of your geometry book. Um, but you probably got a calculator doing this. So tangent 12, we're going to cross multiply. All right. So make this look like a fraction. Um, I like to call this the Malcolm X method. Boom. 1 times 141 is 141. Tangent 12 times X. Put the X in front. Give me tangent 12. Now, I'm trying to solve for x. So, since I'm trying to solve for x, that means I'm trying to isolate x. I'm trying to get x by itself. So, I got to get rid of the tangent 12. So, that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the right side by tangent 12. And I'm going to divide the left side by tangent 12. All right? These are going to cancel out, leaving me with just x. So, whatever this is, whatever this is equal to, is going to be my answer. Right? So whatever that is equal to is going to be my answer, all right? So we got 
141 divided by tangent 12 is 663.4 feet. When you put, throw that in your calculator, it's going to give you 663.4. All right? Well, we can round it to the nearest tenth. All right? Now, this is not the final answer. This only represents this right here. 663.4 feet. All right? Now, we then want to figure out what this whole length is. We'll call that Y. From here to here. Now, I already told you why we want that. Why do we need that? Right? So when you're sitting in class and your teacher saying, well, we got to figure this out. Then we got to figure that out. Make sure they tell you why. Like, why do you need that? And like I told you before, I need this because we're trying to figure out what this is from point B to point A. If I know the whole distance from the shoreline to point A, I could just subtract the distance from the shoreline to point B. And that's going to leave me with the part that I'm looking for, for my final answer. All right. So now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the six degree angle because this is still a right triangle also. So this makes a right triangle as well, right? So I got a six degree angle, all right? And the lighthouse is still 141 feet high and I still got a right triangle, right? And I'm trying to figure out my adjacent side, right? So I'm still going to use tangent. I'm still use tangent because the side that's opposite the six is the 141, and the side that's adjacent, I don't know the whole side. I don't know. We call it a Y, right? We call it a Y. So let's do this. Let's do um, tangent of six degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is still 141, just like it was in, with the 12 degree angle. So we got 141. My adjacent side, I don't know. That's my Y value. All right? So now, let me give you a shortcut too, right? And I could have used it, I could have did it in this problem right here, but um, I didn't, but I'm gonna give you the shortcut. When you have a tangent equation, an equation with a trig ratio set up like this, and you got your variable in the denominator, you can just switch the places. Like these two can basically switch places. That's a cheat code. That's a trigonometry algebra cheat code. That's a trigonometry algebra cheat code. Whenever you got a um, like a tangent, like a like a trig function over here, and then over here you got a fraction on the other side of the equal sign, and you got the variable in the denominator, you can just do this. Y equals 141 over tangent of 6. And actually, I mean, you can do this in any equation. Any equation when you have a value is equal to a value over a variable. You can just switch that value with the variable. When it's set up like this, right, with the variable in the denominator. Because look, look what we ended up with here. We started out with tangent 12 equals 141 over x. Didn't we end up with x equals 141 over tangent 12? So we could have just switched these two. And we would have had x equals 141 over tangent 12, like we had 141 over tangent 12. 141 over tangent 12. So what I just gave you right there is a cheat code. Cheat code. Right? It's actually not a trig cheat code. It's actually a just an algebra cheat code, right? When you got a variable in your denominator, you can switch that variable with the term or the expression that's on the other side of the equal sign, if it's in the numerator. And if it's, um, as long as it's not a fraction, I believe. Yeah, as long as it's not an actual fraction, all right? Uh, so now we got y is equal to 141 over tangent 6. Now, putting that in your calculator, 141 over tangent 6 is equal to 1,341.5 feet. And that's calculator work. So put in 141 and divide, hit the divide button and tangent of six, or some, some calculators you gotta hit six first and then hit tangent. Like if you're using an iPhone calculator app, you might have to type in, you have to type in a six first and then hit tangent, all right? So that's gonna be 1,341.5 feet. Now, look, now you can visualize it now, right? Because you know that from here to here is 663.4 feet. But from here all the way to here is 1,341.5 feet. So the difference between these two is going to leave you with this right here. The difference between these two is going to leave you with this right here. Again, the difference between these two is going to leave you with this right here. 
So let's do this. Let's do 1,341.5 feet minus 663.4 feet equals 678.1 feet. So that means that, oh, oh, but remember, the instruction said to... The instructions say. Instructions said, round to the nearest foot, right? So if you wrote this answer down, this will be wrong, because this is rounded to the nearest tenth, and you can't be like, oh well, it ain't that deep. I did all this work. How you gonna mark it wrong? Well, listen, follow the instructions. You don't gotta worry about all that. If the instructions say to round to the nearest foot, just round to the nearest foot, and you don't gotta be mad. So six seventy eight point one becomes six seventy eight. Now remember, we're rounding. You got two choices when you round. So I can either stay at 8 or I can go up to 9. Stay at 8 or go up to 9. I'm going to stay at 8 because in the tenth place there was a 1. So if there's ever a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, that digit is going to stay where it's at. If it was a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, that digit is going to go up to the next digit. 5 and above, give it a shove. 4 and below, let it go. 5 and above, give it a shove. Up. 4 and below, let it go. You know what I mean? So... This is 678 feet right here. That's the distance from point A to point B. So that's the distance that the boat traveled from the point where it had a 6 degree angle of elevation to the point where it had a 12 degree angle of elevation. So again, another use of trigonometry. So if you ever out boating and you ever trying to figure some things out, um, figure out distances, how much distance did you cover, how far did you travel, and maybe you don't know or you want to calculate some things, this is another use of trigonometry. All right? So there's that. I um, also want to shout out historically black colleges and universities. I'm a product of historically black colleges and universities. Um, and they also developed a lot of people that have done a lot for the black community and the black collective. So shout out to those institutions. Um, and yeah, get some practice on problems like this. Practice word problems. Word problems are very important to understand. Word problems are very important to understand. So um, draw your pictures. Read your word problems and try to draw diagrams whenever possible. I can't imagine trying to do this problem without a diagram. I mean, I probably could do it. I probably could figure it out, but it would just be annoying. It would be annoying trying to figure out, well, you know, because I, I would have to try to visualize it in my head. Well, instead of trying to visualize it in my head, why not just draw it on paper or draw it on the board and just look at it so that way I don't got to like try to imagine what it looks like. I can actually see what it looks like. Like imagine me, imagine me trying to explain this to you in this video and you don't have this picture here. It would be ridiculous, right? So um, definitely get into the habit of reading the word problems and drawing the diagrams. You know what I mean? All right. So get some practice with some problems like this, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.